Hey everybody, just coming with a quick update on the USB chargers for wheelchairs this week. Um, I think I mentioned in a couple of videos I've been making some tweaks to them. We had a little problem where, and it, I'll include myself on my own chair, where if you had loose charge ports, basically a worn out charge port, something about the intermittent load unload, load unload as they're making contact was blowing the chargers out. And it was blowing out a little diode um, that's to protect it from reverse voltage. So I tried a few different things um, and I ultimately ended up with a extra diode on the, the leads between the, uh, the actual plug that goes into the chair and the circuit board itself. And that solved my problems, solved problems for a few of my customers that had the same problem. I mean, we we're only looking at maybe 5% of customers that ran into this issue, but I, I want these chargers to work for everybody. And the one bad part when you're sending them out to people is it's hard to diagnose remotely. So luckily, and luckily, luckily it happened on my chair. So it gave me one to try and I blew several circuit boards before I finally figured out what the problem was and how to remedy it. So uh, I just took a picture, I'll be uploading this to the website uh, to show off what the, the tweaks were. Um, I'm gonna bring this over to the camera. What we used to have is, uh, the autofocus doesn't wanna work. Well, I'll throw a picture of it up there anyway. Um, what, what we used to do is have, uh, just one straight lead and then one fuse link. And now we have the fuse link and a diode. Um, simple change, you know, cost me like a dime extra on each one to make it, not a big deal. So um, yeah, all the chargers going forward, will have that set up on it. Um, I also wanted to just show up one little thing. Um, it's getting hot and, and that sucks. I got another project I'm working on, the Cripple Cooler project that every time, you know, summer rolls around, I give it another whirl. But I think this year, I think this year we're gonna get it. And, uh, get a couple beta testers out there and try them out and hopefully next year we'll be selling them because um, I know as a quad, summer sucks. I can't handle the heat. So working on that. But another alternative is a simple fan. Um, you can see I got a charger back here on my test plug. Um, this is just a, basically emulates the charge port on your chair. It's 24 volts. Um, the charger that I actually been using to charge my own phone and then just a USB fan plugged into it. and they should kick off a decent amount of, of air. So um, if you need to keep cool in the summer, you, you can do more than just charge your phones with these little uh, USB uh, connectors. You can run a fan, you can run a light, basically anything that is USB powered um, up to about 2.1 amps is about all they'll put out continuously. Um, ran into an issue recently on Apple iPad Air 2 with a Retina display. Um, very specific model of iPad, uh, that takes 2.4 amps and the charger just doesn't have the guts to do it. So it kind of kicks on, kicks off, kicks on. It won't provide a constant charge. It just gets too hot. The main chip gets too hot. So I'm uh, also going to put a note about that on the website because you know, don't want people buying this and then not be able to charge your tablet, obviously. So if you have any other tablet, I haven't really run into issues, any, any other tablet that charges off a of USB. Um, I know like the Microsoft Surface, it takes like 12 volts, um, 9 volts or 12 volts. So obviously those won't work for that. But um, yeah, it, feel free to try out lots of different things on your, on your charger. I know people that use lights on the fans. Um, there's some other fans that are like flexible, so you can just like hook them up and they'll just blow on you. Um, again, it's not, not the, you know, the greatest cooling device, but hey, a little air blowing over you is better than nothing. Um, I also want to just point out one thing. Let me see if I can grab one of the, uh, the plastic housings that I'm making on the new 3D printer. Yes, yeah, so I got one of these too. Um, and actually, I know the camera's not going to get it, so I'll describe it. And uh, right now, there'll be a picture on your screen because when I edit this, I'll add the picture to the screen. I added a couple little ribs to the uh, the plastic housings to just stiffen them up just a little bit more. Um, it's interesting how two different 3D printers with the same size nozzle and everything actually print a little bit different. Um, I'm liking the Lulzbot, just kind of learning the Lulzbot. So. Um, it gave me an opportunity to make a couple additions, make these uh, housings just a little bit stronger. And uh, yeah, they're, I, I do the bite test when I'm, when I'm printing this stuff. I literally put a couple ones that I print in my mouth and I chomp as hard as I can. If they don't break, I know when you drop them, they shouldn't break either. So um, passes, 
passes the cripple quality control measures. Uh, so anyway, um, thanks for watching. Uh, throw a link in here to go to the store if you want to buy one of these devices. We have a bunch made up. Going to keep making up more. Finally, feel good to ship, ship, ship. And uh, we're dropping several in the mailbox every day. So appreciate all your support. Uh, we're stocked up on basically everything to build these. So um, feel free to order. If anybody's interested in quantity orders, I'm a, a, I've done a deal for one independent living center. Um, and if somebody wants to buy 10, 20 of these, uh, just shoot me an email. And uh, my email is down below, sales at crippleconcepts.com. Shoot me an email and uh, let's see what we can work out. Um, definitely want to do bulk deals to those who, who want to do that. Um, to throw them in like emergency kits or to hand them out to, to clients and stuff like that. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for, for more fun stuff out of Cripple Concepts.